Hey there! Laban did a, a Right to Heal project, and people who participated in that got a, a, a grab bag, a goodie bag of, of uh, items sent to them. And um, I was not available to participate at the time, but I was in touch with, with Laban, and I, I did try to, to at least post about this, and Laban sent me one of these bags. So I thought what I would do is review what was in it, because I thought that might be something I can contribute. So, I got a couple of things. I did a live Instagram video where I, I sort of unpacked the whole thing, but there's one fountain pen, there's two rollerballs. I will review both. There was also a Laban ink in it. I put that in the fountain pen so you can see both at the same time. And today, we're going to have a look. Uh, we're going to have a look. <clears throat> Sorry, we're going to have a look at this one. Uh, this is the... Uh, Antique gold. There is also an antique copper. Given the weight of this pen and given the smell, comma, lack thereof, I'm thinking this is the antique gold, but they're the same price. Check them out online, you'll see what I mean. The, the, the differences that I see in pictures are not huge. So, I'm going with antique gold. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I will do a writing sample and I will tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Before we do that, I will say a very kind thank you to Laban for this, this uh, Right to Heal um, project because I think it was very interesting and I think in these times that are very interesting and are also quite challenging for a lot of people, I think this was a really wonderful initiative. So, um, I was just not available at the time this was really going on. but. I really like the idea of, of what, what happened, so I think it's really cool. Let's get into the pen. Okay, so here we go with this Laban Antique Gold. There's also an antique copper. These pens are made to have a distressed look, which I'm sure not everyone would like. Uh, I really enjoy this because it does look like an antique metal, which I think is really cool. Sleeker pen, number 5 nib, converter is supplied, it has a spring-loaded clip, I'll get to that. The list price is about 110 US, but I saw them at Gold Spot for 87.95. I just went there because I know they have a lot of La Bombe pens. 87.95. Found a pen under a hundred dollars. And um, that's a nice writer, but we'll get to that. So what do we have? The top of the cap, we have this mechanism for the clip. The clip is spring-loaded, works very well. The cap, slightly bulbous, little barrel-shaped, right? On the center band, we have Laban and nothing else. We have the barrel, tapers down, ends in this little end piece. Not sharp. Pretty flush, but not 100% flush. Cap on screws. One. About one and a half turns, I would say. Then you have the section which is hourglass shaped and a number five two-tone nib which says Laban has their Laurel Crown uh, logo on it um, and it says Germany. You have these threads, they are not sharp. I, I always worry when I see this on metal, they are not at all sharp. Even this, this edge, I don't find it particularly sharp, the edge between the barrel and the section, so that's really not bad. Barrel unscrews and the pen is fed through a standard international cartridge or the supplied Laban converter. Does the pen post? It's a fairly sleek pen. It does post. Becomes quite long, but it works well. Now, let's see how this pen writes. The ink I put in came in this goodie bag as well. So what we have here is the Laban Antique 
gold. The nib is broad, and that is an actual broad nib, which was great. Uh, a lot of broad nibs these days I find are basically just mediums. This is a broad nib, I would say. And the ink is Laban Blue, which I'm assuming is a washable blue. It reminds me a lot in color of um, uh, Waterman Serenity Blue, but I haven't actually tried whether it's washable. We should probably do that on camera because I like living on the edge. Okay. It's not an ink review though, but you know. Now, here's one thing I will say about this pen. A very pleasant nib. That is a broad nib that writes very smoothly, quite wetly. Uh, I know you. the camera always picks up the sound of the writing. It may, make, it may make it sound scratchy. It's really not. It's a very uh, smooth nib, but the camera microphone picks up that frequency well, I guess. Okay, a bit of fast writing to see how well the feed keeps up. For the record, this pen has been capped for 48 hours, has not been touched, and this is how it writes straight away. I'm really quite impressed. I, I, I really mean that. I find this um, pretty impressive as a performance. Uh, wetness. As I said, quite wet. Let's create a little thing there that can dry so we can put a drop of water on as we do other things. It is a round nib. It's not stubby. It's also not advertised as stubby. I think this is a good thing. If I buy a medium round nib, I expect a round nib, not a stubby nib. Um, as always, very careful. Pretty stiff. You may be able to squeeze out a little bit of line variation, but very, very careful. This is not a flex nib. Reverse writing. As you can see, very possible, not scratchy, and you go from a broad nib to, I would say, a skinny medium or a somewhat chubby fine. There you have it. Now, do, 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 do. see what happens there. I shall, uh, I should have done that sooner, shouldn't I? Because now I have to entertain you. Oh, I have an idea. Let's. Um, Let's do this in impossible with a round nib, but some sort of gothic style to take some time. Uh, okay. Well, what do we have here? Shall we call that a washable blue? I'm willing to bet that it's going to be a pretty washable blue. So, there you have it. Let's talk about what I like, what I don't like about this pen. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about this Laban Antique Gold? Well, to be honest, there's quite a couple of things I like about it, and there is not that much I really don't like about it. It's a sleek pen. It's a somewhat thin pen. I tend to like pens that are a little girthier, but that is personal preference. Right? So, I, I, this is not an objective statement. I'm just saying it is somewhat on the thinner side. I mean, look at this section, and then look at something like this. This is a fairly big one, but look at this Faber-Castell Emotion section, and you'll see what I mean. It is a thinner, sleeker pen. But some people really love that, so there's nothing wrong with that. I find the section to be comfortable, even though it is so thin, quite comfortable. Plus, the pen posts really comfortably and securely, making for a very nice, nicely sized pen, and that also adds, the posting adds a little bit of bulk to the pen, so I think that's really nice. The most important thing in my mind is how does it write, and I can't say anything but this pen is an exceptional writer. It writes smoothly, wetly, it did so out of the box, no tuning was required, nothing was required, beautiful writer. Should we expect every pen to write that way? Of course. Does every pen write that way? No. So I think this is a very uh, nice development. Number six nib, sorry, number five nib, I wanted to say should it be a number six nib, typically larger nibs are appreciated. 
I think this pen could get away with the number six nib. I don't know if it would necessarily fit in the section, but I mean, just, just purely by size. But given that this is a sleek pen, I don't think the number five nib really looks out of place. And given that it writes so smoothly and so beautifully, uh, I, I really have nothing to complain about that. Uh, I like that. I like the spring-loaded clip. It's always a, I always find that comforting somehow that that is uh, uh, um, secure and won't just snap off or, or bend out of shape. And I love the distressed look. I, I really enjoy the way that that looks. It does look like an antique object, which I think is very nice. One thing I will say that I don't like so much about it, and I will say this has become better over the period of time I used it. It is a metal pen. And um, it makes your fingers, yeah, it makes your fingers smell a bit of metal. And that does not necessarily bother everyone, but it's there. I really, yeah, yeah, definitely there. And that might be a bit of a turn off to some people, because some people, I know these things are a big deal. Uh, one of my friends is allergic to, to metal and he can, when he holds this, he can sort of taste the metal, it's like it's a reaction. Then this pen is not for you, because this absolutely has that, that um, olfactory sensation. So there you go. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.